Wait, there's more? Thank you very much. Let's read this real quick. Uh, okay, so Nice was recommended by Marek to the team because Marek was like pissed what was happening in the team in winter. He got two offers, one from Excel, one second was from Fnatic. He did try for Excel first. He said he thought Excel also was much better on paper than Fnatic because we got two academy plays which he knew almost nothing about. Also, he said Viteo is fucked in the head and that if he accepted, he would be almost uncoachable. In Fnatic, he didn't try out. They just did two-hour interview, want to sign him immediately, which he accepted. He said he was scared about players, but he knew Mark well, and he certainly wouldn't go to Fnatic if, Fnatic if Mark was not there. The one week, he said he was happy he signed because allegedly Fnatic is a very professional org. They have great office, great cook and food, and everything around it. Then he won a lottery with players because they are easy to coach and listen to him. Even came to him after initial meeting that was 50 minutes, said he is great and easy to listen to, and that is a big upgrade. Nacho feels respected, and the work environment feels like the good check old times. Then he talked about Reckless, how he's very professional, and he surprised him as a player with how much knowledge he has. He also said he has moments when he shows he doesn't like something with the body language and that you can see it on him, but otherwise very professional. Uh, like he said, that sometimes he's very passive-aggressive. He said that the hardest co coach is hardest to coach is Razok and Reckless, then they went on to the management talk. They asked if they feel any pressure from management side. He said that there's no pressure because they took this split lightly. Like, yeah, we have two new academy players and we're trying to build something, but they would like at least top eight. Nigel also said that pressure usually comes from players themselves and that he felt it too after week one. Then there was a talk about beer because Ivan brought him Spanish beer. They were talking how badly it tastes, how we do not want to know how it tastes, by the way. The players were in the office after office hours and they also talked about how he wanted to make the environment that players willing to stay after scrims at the office to have fun with each other and to bond. And he succeeded. Good news. That is great news. Then they talked about the coach can change team in the times in what time span. Thomas said that it's about two three weeks and you can shape a team. Also he praised Hiva. He made an impetus on video. He said he is insane and very helpful and he praised Shaves. He said it wouldn't be the same without them. Also he said he's not sure it's him that's changed that he's just lucky to be where he is and that's a combination of factors clicked right now. Then they again got to how he was recruited. He said he wanted to come by train. Uh, Come by a train, but Fnatic refused and made sure he would be there for the first day of preseason. They played scrims, so they arranged the plane tickets for him. He also said that he took it as a last chance in esports. If he helps Fnatic, that helps his career a lot. If not, he would work in medicine. He also spoke about how Fnatic wanted to get Yamato grabs, but they refused because they were worried about what they going on, going into, and that could end their careers. After chat, asked if Razog is healthy, he said he feels fine now. I was not really worried about my career. I just uh, asked for money that. Um, couldn't be accepted at the time. Uh, really not, uh, it's not about my career. Then they asked about practice and how it went. Nigel laughed because he said he's proud about mid to bot concept he brought to the team. The only concept that is needed to win Czech, uh, SK, uh, blah, 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 blah. SK, I don't know what that is, Slovenia, Slovakia. The players are super good at practice and they're getting better from match to match. He also said we murdered every team at scrims in preseason 85% win rate with LEC teams. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the top four didn't really scrim here. Keep this in mind, yeah? He said he thought the first week would be at least 2-1 or the worst 1-2, but they noticed also set up anxiety and they were more worried. Also, he said that not only Elska was scared, but also Razor for the first game, stage nerves. He was asked who, was, who the most ready players is in the team. He said definitely Humanoid. Then he quoted Humanoid in the check from today. Hey mate, I don't know what the, are these teams doing in LEC. I look at the minimap and I see every team insanely griefy. He says Mark, insane player. They're playing three days of scrims this week, not over yet obviously, and they only lost one game. This also I heard too. Uh, also, he says it's mostly because of Marek. He said he made him motivated, which he was lacking with Crusher. He said that he sees in him that he wants to win the split and that anything else is worthless to him. So he's making sure to motivate him by telling him we can beat everyone. That's really good. Motivated Marek is dangerous, Marek. This is essential. Find a way to, to make Marek, you know, be motivated and you got yourself uh, a deadly team already. Then he kind of talked about NA because Freeze is coaching an A team and they were laughing about NA versus EU World Finals. Nightshade then said he came from NA, so EU Scrims realized NA has no chance, so they should just give up. <laughs> There's a big difference. Mostly because EU is also very bad right now, still would sh still we would shit some them. Also said he feels that Marek changed a lot from the Czech times and that he's more professional and respected from the org. He said the relationship is Marek says something is has full trust and vice versa. Also he said Marek has insane game knowledge and that his brain for the game is priceless. Uh, yeah, for sure. He's learning from Mark the macro cons of the game sometimes. Change was also that he is more emotionless than before. He said that if he would play World Finals, he wouldn't give a fuck. It would just be another game for him. But that also means sometimes it's harder to work with him as he also doesn't care sometimes. But if he does, he is explaining everything in reviews and shows great concepts. 
Then he asked about if there's any beef in the team when he came. He said that there's, there was a damaged relationship between players and there's a show when they started losing on stage again. They apparently worked on that, gave themselves feedback, and he's claimed that now none has a beef with anybody and is resolved. He says they still have some little problems like when the Sejuani is ulting into Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> they are making fun of Razor and call him a Narnia engager, but he says it can be solved and worked on. Now he's talking about goals for the split. He says that his goals are playoffs, which is a realistic goal. His predictions are winning against Astralis, losing against Vitality, and then BO3 against Mad, which he says will be a banger. And if you make playoffs, that is very dependent on who you face. He also said that he thinks T1 will win Worlds, and it's time for Fakers for Star. He mentioned that they are learning concept from T1 because they're insane. Did they learn about bot recalls around tempo? Uh, okay. Got two more slides. Two more slides. Now they're talking about Oscar. He says he's amazing rookie and very introverted emotional. Bro, when is this starting? He said that they handled him pretty well as he was very scared, even though he tried to now show it, not show it, uh, and not talkative. He tried talking to him, uh, tried help him by talking in private. He said once he cried about scrims. Then he literally talked about the Legend and Action vision that what, what Reckless was talking about is important and well shown. That is great when you're passionate about the game, because it shows you care about the game you need five minutes or so talk to talk to in person, you know. Also, he said in this context that it's important to have environments like the one he mentioned. That even after a 0 3 week, his players are there for each other and their friends, most importantly. They don't just run home and are overwhelmed with emotion. They try to relax with board games, PC games. Now they talk about daily schedule Team lunch, solo queue, five scrim games, summary meeting. Coach schedule, talk to Eva, is very good at working exactly 8 hours a day, but he was working a bit extra because they have a day off tomorrow. Very passionate. Also, as active players have to be there at 11.30, so the coaches, no, they have to be there earlier than players to show that they also work also, they should stay as long as possible. When I was in Fnatic, I arrived at 11, I left at 2 in the night, I was there all the time. Nigel also said that he would like to have performance coach for the next split, yes please. He said that structure is up to him, if they would have budget, it would be great, uh, as most of those things, life, life, lifestyle, etc. They also mentioned a few rules they have, for example, they cannot con consume easy sugars, they do not play at least two games, they also educated players about how coffee works and how diet should be built. They were also thinking about physical activities, if they should make them mandatory, but they were ill, so he did not. Yep, makes sense. It's time for talk about meta. Meta is the most fun it's ever been. Jungle changes. Uh, the best meta read... They had the best meta read of all of LEC on 13.4. He also thinks they had solid meta read now. Okay. We have a jungle that has peak performances, also follow-ups. Now he's at the top of the game, so we're good. They share offers with Valorant team. They give us advice how to play low and give him advice how to play Valorant. It's super fun. Okay. They talked about realistic expectations. He doesn't think this roster can beat Korean or Chinese teams. He also said that if G2 and Matt are not meta boop, it will be very hard to beat them. Nevertheless, he said that they do not know the, what ceiling of this roster is, as they are getting better each day, so still they can surprise even him. Now we're doing a tier list of players from Fnatic 1 to 10 in LEC, Oscar 4th or 5th, because he's really keen about fighting and fights a lot and needs to learn still how to play at the highest league. He talked about cons of winning and losing. Razor, good day 3rd, bad day 6th, humanoid 1st by far, reckless 5th, 6th, upset 1st, and second extra kick, Advian fifth, sixth. My man is just talking freely. He's, he's just talking so freely. Crazy. My man just rating all of his homie. He talking about concept of winning and losing, uh, trades, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Advian fifth, sixth. Based on his points, he's missing mechanics compared to the best supports. He can't be worse than Hillisang. To what Nice should reply that every time they saw Hilly in, in, in the game, whole office was thank you, Hilly. Always fanatic. He was then asked about his opinion on Hilly. He said that one of the players in the team has a very controversial opinion on Hilly, but he won't say who. Also, you heard rumors that Matter apparently mental boom because Hilly is running it down in screens, where we should make our own opinion about him. Let's look at the last slide. Now, bro, there's nothing in bold. Now he's asked about what team he would build from current LEC players to have a shot at winning. He would take Chasey over Photon. He also thinks that the team would work well as friends. If he would want to be sure not to risk conflict of ADC, he would take Exa. He was also talking about the Czech teams. He said they asked Entropic to warm up before the officials. And he said they're a pretty solid team and they can make it far at EMA Masters. He also talked about Slovak support Skamilius that he has talked about in LEC teams. was still not given a chance. He said eventually he should get the chance. 
Now they're talking about Patrick. He likes Patrick's aggressivity. But since they are a team that does not win much, Patrick feels they need to make hero plays and to say, but Patrick is playing very timid, man. This guy didn't seem to do any aggressive plays at all. Yeah, besides that uh, one game against... Um... Then they tried to talk about Kazi, but Nietzsche said he doesn't know him. He also said that they, he said they also have a fighting monkey like that in the team, and that is Razork. They're trying to teach him that you can look at the fights uh, and misplays other way, other way than I did mechanical error here and here. He's trying to show that you can also not fight. Now he's talking about opposite situation. He says he has background info, but he obviously can't say. Fnatic fucked up. They had the best ADC that is a bit mental, but still he's the best. They did some things that they made the ADC not wanting to play for them. Opsa said he won't play with them because of the reason I can't tell. He said it's a big, big loss and Fnatic fault. And also they talked about a little about Wunder. He said he also didn't want to play for Fnatic. The reasons were different from Opsa's though. Now they went back to Reckless. Tom said that he's a little different because he's an esport from young age. Not in a bad way though. For example, he asked if he can eat now. That he needs a person that can lead. Is this game fucking starting? Bro, guys! Tell me they're after starting. It's fucking silver scrapes, man.